Hello everyone, I'm the Whiskey Enthusiast. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have Glen Alecky 12. You know, they changed the labeling recently, so I figured it's a good time to review the uh, whiskey that I have the old label of. True to uh, <laughs> whiskey tube form. But you have uh, a couple of you, a uh, few of you have been asking to review the 12, Glen Alecky 12. And uh, label changes are a bit dubious, we always say. Uh, is not as innocent, maybe the juice inside is... Uh, changed as well but when you're talking about someone like Billy Walker who's at the helm of Glen Alecky, that might not be the uh, case. Now Glen Alecky existed long before Billy Walker but it was under the Pernod Ricard banner and uh, the whiskey was just used for mostly for blends. Only when uh, Billy Walker bought the distillery it became uh, the powerhouse it is now and uh, he seems to be doing no wrong in the eyes of us. You know, uh, with the Meikle Tours, the recently released, uh, well, last year, but recent still, peated, peated versions of Glen Alecky, and anything he touches turns to gold. So, Glen Alecky 12, I'll show you the bottle. I like this purple color. Now, uh, I'll put the new label there as well. Some people don't like it. It's the classic discussion, isn't it? Whenever it comes, oh, the old label was better, the new label was better. Some people hate this. Feels like... Uh, Feels like the Flintstones for some reason. I like it. I like it. From the Valley of the Rocks, there's a rock element to it. It's like carved on the rocks. I quite like it. Uh, now, this is 46% ABV, natural color and non-chill filtered. As with all Glenalakis, they don't mess around. Uh, under the guidance of Master Distiller Billy Walker, a process of slow fermentation, precise distillation and long maturation in the finest casks from around the world delivers this fantastic single mold as natural as the rocky place it hails from. Right, so it's a nice color, isn't it? Okay, and uh, this is matured in a combination of ex-bourbon, virgin oak, oloroso, and PX sherry. So it's a good combination, and uh, I'm drinking from my Bobar Glencairn in Edinburgh. So if you happen to find yourself in Edinburgh and the, uh, the uh, Victoria Street, uh, go to Ball Bar. It's a really nice place. Okay, Glen Alecky 12, as requested on the nose. It's sherry. Yes, it's, uh, it's a sherry bonbon, right? It's molasses, a Christmas cake, spicy, roasted nuts, chocolate, ginger, dark honey, honeyed walnut, uh, that's roasted. Sometimes uh, Asian restaurants give it. Uh, beautifully sweet. Red fruits. Bit sour. Bit acidic. Like a nice, nice jammy. Um, what would you call it? Like a boozy jam. Yeah, what would boozy jam is? Uh, some of those boozy cakes, rum raisins, uh, rum, uh, not rum, but the Christmas cake is basically alcohol soaked, brandy soaked cake, stewed apples. Uh, yeah, yeah, very sherry, cinnamon, cinnamon, absolute cinnamon, nutmeg. I know they're not the same, they go hand in hand with me. A lot of honey. Dark cherries, yeah, maracino cherries, red apple, juicy, apple pie. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful nose. Okay, on the nose, okay, on the palate. <laughs> the nose is really nice, on the palate. Yeah, definitely. See, I'm not a massive sherry fan, but whatever Glen Alecky does, they do it well. I can't drink a second glass of it, it's too rich for me but it's really good. The palate is very sweet, but balanced with the spiciness from the virgin oak. And the nuttiness from the Oloroso is balancing the extra sweetness from the PX. The nice caramelly vanilla, banana, and a little bit of burnt, like charred, smoky notes from the ex-bourbon. It's a very well-made whiskey. Yeah, the finish is medium, it's not super long, but it leaves you with dark chocolate, 
hints of ginger, and hints of cinnamon. It's sweet, not overly sweet, borderline for me. Like I said, I can't drink the second glass. It's, uh, it's like a dessert whiskey for me. Hence, I've, been, I've had it for a while and it's not going down. Not because it's not good. It's because I don't like sweet whiskey that much. But it's a nice dessert whiskey. Um, I really enjoy it as a dessert whiskey. But if you're a sherry fan, I think uh, this bottle won't last you very long. It's a very, very well-made whiskey. Second round, apples come forward. More grapes. Oh yeah, grape jam. Red, black currant. Yeah. Sour and uh, sweet with hints of ginger and cinnamon. Second time round, sweetness is there. A bit more tannic now. The sherry effects are there, but the roasted nuts. The cinnamon, the ginger, oh, it's a very Moorish dram. I know I will get overwhelmed if I keep drinking it, but it's very Moorish. It's really nice. I can't fault it. I can't fault it. Um, yeah, guys, I'm going to recommend three Glencairns on the Glenelg 12. This is their entry level, basic whiskey. Their, you know, starting whiskey. It's not starting whiskey. It's an incredible whiskey for a very well priced, in, the, in a good price range and uh, presented craft this is what we want this is what we want from every whiskey it's really good uh, using amazing casks with good distillation and presenting to you in a good way that you would appreciate and you would enjoy guys uh, whoever requested it from me uh, thank you i hope you enjoyed it i did enjoy it, so thank you for your uh, request and i hope you enjoyed it as well it's a beautiful beautiful whiskey uh, if you're a sherry fan i recommend the tangland cairns if you're like me, who's not a Sherry fan, I still recommend it, three Glencairns. Um, and I recommend three Glencairns on any Glenelgy whatsoever. Glenelgy 10, cast strength, I highly recommend it. I never had a bottle. I had a few samples. I really enjoyed every batch. Uh, they move around. These ones, really, really good. Um, so if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It does mean a lot to me. And let me know, have you tried Glenelgy 12? Have you tried the new packaging? Did you do it side by side? Is there a difference? Glenallikis are craft presented whiskies. There could be some batch variation even within the same uh, bottling uh, design. So apart from that, is there like a massive difference is what I'm asking. But let me know in the comments and please, whoever requested, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video or not. I know it's been a short, but it's a straightforward, very good whiskey. So guys, if you want me, if you want to support me a little bit more, you can also join my channel with a small fee. If not, likes and shares are always appreciated. Thank you very much. And I shall see you on the next one. Cheers.